In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Two questions, one of them not verbalized, and one response that we remember, and one not verbalized. Such was the case with Mary. What does it all mean? That was the question that came first. Because the angel had said, favored one. What does this mean? Favored one. What is going to happen? What does it? And then when the angel said, you will bear a son. And your son will be the son of the most high God. An heir to the throne of David. And his kingdom will have no end. He will rule of the house of Jacob. Isn't it interesting that she only had one verbal question? How are we going to do it? How can this happen? I've had no relations with a man. This is not normal. It's interesting, isn't it, how God can tell us wonderful things and we completely believe them, and then he can give us some simple things that we doubt. I don't think she doubted. She just had to make it very clear. Because the other response, not the one you've heard, the one you've heard is, let it be to me according to thy word. We know that one. But I think within her she was saying this, Okay, let's do it. I believe she was so much in tune with God that the thing that really perplexed her was how, how you're going to put this together, God. I accept the fact that you can do it, but how are we going to do it? A religious girl, no doubt because it shows that she really knew Scripture from hearing her in the Magnificat. But a simple girl, a simple girl, she's 15 years old, and she came from a town that nobody had ever heard of, a town you couldn't find in the Midrash. You, you, couldn't, you couldn't find in any of the Old Testament. You couldn't find in the Talmud. You couldn't find in the writings of Josephus. It just didn't exist until Jesus came. And so she's there, responding to the directive. The important directive that we need to understand is that this little girl, by responding in such a very positive manner, became the first disciple the very first disciple. A girl from nowhere. Well, can we understand that today in our relationship with God? Because in many ways, God is saying to us, Hail, favored one. I am choosing you as I chose Mary to be the bearer of Jesus. Wow! We say it in, in, in such a simple way, it's like it is not the greatest honor in the world, but to be chosen to show Jesus is very much like the greeting that Mary received. God is saying to us through Jesus Christ, Hail, favored one, I am choosing you to bear Christ. We say, well, I, I, I can do that, but not with total commitment. 
Mary had to have total commitment for this whole plan to work and for us to really be instruments of his word. It takes total commitment. It's easy enough to celebrate Jesus Christ as our Savior. We want that. But to give complete control to God through Jesus Christ, to actually become a disciple, to become a Jesus bearer, means that we've got to give all. We can't hold back. Which we're saying in this rough time, God, I'll deal with that later. Don't you realize I'm going through some very tough times, as we all are, with everything that's going on in the world and this COVID thing keeping me locked up in my room all the time. God, I, I, I can't do anything right now. Don't you understand that? I'm a little bit nervous now, and when I get rid of these nerves, God, I'm, I'm going to get with you, and we're going, to, we're going to talk about this disciple thing. Well, there is a great deal of nervousness. I'm thinking of the lady who's, who's taking an airline flight, and sitting next to her was a little guy, a young fellow, she figured that probably it was his first time flying. And they hit some turbulence. And the plane was going up and down and back and forth. And, and she, she was getting scared. And she looked over at the kid, and he was playing with something. And he was laughing. And so she looked over at Amy. She said, honey, are, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, you're not scared, are you? No, I'm not scared. Uh, yeah, you, you, you seem to be uh, having fun. Uh, the turbulence doesn't, doesn't bother you, does it? Oh, no. My dad's a pilot. You see, the things that are going on right now shouldn't bother us as much if we understand who runs the universe. There's things going on right now. But who is in control? That's the question. So Jesus can be given to other people through us. Oh, but we can't do that. And especially my voice is not big enough to really make any difference in this world. Well, no, you make a difference in, in the people around you, and then they make a difference, and it all multiplies. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't make much of a difference in this church auditorium if, if I didn't have amplification. The booth gives me amplification, so if you're seated in the far back, you can hear me, and you wouldn't be able to hear me through your ordinary voice speaking. And it's the same way with our commitment to God. We serve God, and we proclaim Jesus, and our voice is very small until God's Holy Spirit comes inside us and energizes us, and that's what projects it. No, you can't do it yourself, but with God you can. How can it happen? It can happen by total surrender. That's the way it happened with Mary. Just with total surrender saying, okay, let's do it. Now the thing to remember is, each one of us is important in proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. But what's even more interesting is how much that is increased through the church, through people who believe as we do. And if you find somebody who is committed as you are, and maybe if they're more committed, then that's the point you reach, then you can do even more. 
and you can share Jesus even more. You can be a bearer of Jesus even more. The story about a hunter in Africa came upon a pygmy, little guy, standing on top of a rhinoceros that had just been killed. And the hunter asked the pygmy, what happened? Kill the rhinoceros. You, you kill the rhinoceros. Yes. Huge rhinoceros. Mean looking. You, you, you killed that rhinoceros. Yes. Well, how did you do it? With my club. Wow. W with your club. I'd like to see that club. <laughs> how, big, how big is your club? He said, I've got about a hundred in my club. And, and so it is with us. The more believers can get together and work together for the things that matter to God, the more we share Jesus, the more we become as Mary a Jesus bearer. Now, I've given you the good news. Let me give you some bad news. When God gives you an invitation to be totally surrendered to Him, you need to answer. And I firmly believe if you close your door to the invitation from Jesus Christ to believe on Him, and to accept Him as Lord and Savior, and to follow Him completely as disciple, after a while, I believe this, you're going to stop hearing the voice. I think after a while, God is going to stop bothering you, or else you've said no so many times, you've just closed Him out. I have all kinds of flashlights around the house. And every once in a while, I go through and I throw out flashlights, throw them away. Because we like to have flashlights everywhere we might need them, by the bedside, in the kitchen, in the living room, in the fun room, everywhere. And so I don't use the flashlights very much. And when I don't use the flashlights very much, if it goes for a long time, the acid eats into the flashlight, and it's no good anymore. There's not going to be any more light from that flashlight because it has been ignored, and I think it's the same way in our discipleship. Total commitment. Total commitment because God has said to you, favored one, I'm asking you to be the bearer of Jesus Christ, as Mary was the first disciple, I'm asking you to be my disciple too. And you can phrase your acceptance as beautifully as Mary if you choose. But you can also say in your heart, as I believe she said in hers, okay. Let's do it. Amen.